In the conclusion of The Beekeeper, Adam Clay kills several members of the FBI and Secret Service while searching for Direct Danforth, who also doesn't survive. Jason Statham plays the title role of the beekeeper in David Ayer's action movie. A man on a mission, Clay makes it all the way to the White House in his effort to avenge Alois Parker. Beneath a truck on its way to the gathering President Danforth is hosting, Clay deftly navigates past well-trained security personnel to get entry. Once inside, Clay faces Verona Parker, the daughter of Alois, an agent and Wallace Westwald, the former director of the CIA, who is about to shoot him. Josh Hutcherson's character direct confronts his mother in the Oval Office when she learns that her son has been conducting phishing schemes using Danforth Enterprises' data mining software. Additionally, Direct funded President Danforth's campaign with illicit funds. Direct takes advantage of the circumstance to kill the FBI deputy director and keep his mother at gunpoint because Danforth is furious. But Clay enters the room suddenly and shoots Direct once in the head. After launching himself out the window, Clay reaches the river, where his equipment is waiting for him. With a clear shot at him, Parker chooses not to kill him and lets Clay escape. The beekeeper program is so top secret that it took Wallace Westweld some time to learn about it. As a last measure and the last line of defense, the program enlists agents to train. The beekeepers are tasked with guarding the beehive and are provided with resources to finish their mission and exercise independent judgment once all other agents and resources have been depleted. While it appears that they are free to act outside of CIA or FBI guidelines, Beekeepers are supposed to behave in the best interests of the hive. The level of training possessed by beekeepers surpasses that of special forces and other bureau agents. The start date of the beekeeper program is unknown. However, it has been running in the background for a while now, with beekeeper identities removed from the system to prevent them from being located. Wallace warns direct that they are hazardous and that when a beekeeper says you're going to die, you're going to die. Because Clay and the other beekeepers operate beyond the law, everything is possible for them. Verona, even though Parker believes Adam Clay is eventually correct, she is determined to pursue him because there are rules in place to address these kinds of complaints. In the end, Parker had a change of heart as Clay forces her to choose between justice and the law. When Parker has the chance to finally apprehend him, she lets Clay go because she understands his viewpoint and his attempts to hold Direct accountable for the devastation he caused. In this case, Clay is very much operating outside the law as a vigilant, and Parker is trapped between doing what she always felt was right and following Clay's particular brand of justice. Jessica Danforth, the president, was appalled by Clay's killing of Dirac, but she had promised the nation that she would expose Dirac's corruption in handling her campaign funds, even before he passed away and took her captive. Given that she had abandoned her own business to run for president and appeared to have some integrity, unlike her son, Danforth thought it was the proper thing to do. However, it's possible that she won't follow through now that Direct is gone. The public will be curious to discover why Direct was killed, and President Danforth may use his passing to deflect criticism and salvage her reputation. After igniting the first contact center, United Data Group, Clay might have called it a day. Taking United Data Group offline would have been avenging Alois's murder because, after all, it was these people who had conned her out of her money. However, the beekeeper realized he had to remove Direct from office in order to stop more corruption after Clay discovered there were additional call centers and that Direct was the owner of them all. Direct's business would not have suffered significantly enough if Clay had merely eliminated United Data Group and they would have carried on defrauding consumers from other call centers. Because Direct was President Danforth's kid, Clay had to remove him from the hive because he represented a compromised queen bee. Since Direct was an infection that was harming the most susceptible people, Clay wouldn't stop until he was killed. Only one of the mercenaries came near to killing Adam Clay during his escape from the White House. Thus his escape and the likelihood of further pursuit following Derek's murder are more than sufficient to set up the beekeeper too. Furthermore, Parker may decide to change her mind about what she did and try to find Clay again or find a way to work with him on another operation because she let him to leave at the end of the beekeeper. Parker might be elevated now that the FBI director has passed away, and the narrative can continue from there. There has been no announcement of a The Beekeeper sequel as of now, if only to see what Jason Statham's Clay gets up to next and how he will manage to evade getting caught after such a high-profile assassination. The action movie has enough world-building and intrigue to warrant a sequel. Although The Beekeeper appears to be a revenge movie, Clay finds depths of corruption that reveal that no one is completely honest, no matter how noble their motives may seem. 
The movie also shows how the powerful may take advantage of the weak for their own selfish ends, as demonstrated by the way Alois was conned out of her money and donations to charities. Despite being a personal quest, Clay's desire to safeguard the beehive is rooted in the idea of imbalance. He was trying to make up for a wrong that was made even more concerning by the fact that the president's son was in charge of these horrible operations. Furthermore, Parker's choice to let Clay go implies that she is starting to doubt both the boundaries of justice and the applicability of the law. Throughout the movie, the beekeeper questions whether of the two characters' moral assessments is ultimately correct. The movie raises an intriguing question about how to deal with corruption and crime in general, particularly when it comes to the victims.